Hello, my name is Jisbeer Mahior and in this session I'm speaking to you about case studies as a research method. We've all heard of case studies because they're used so often in teaching us good examples to describe, illustrate or explain something that's been taught. However, even though you've studied using case cases, you may not have constructed a formal case study of your own and even if you've created a case study, you may need to revise some of the key features that make a robust and credible case. So the purpose of this session is to help you answer three questions about case studies. Number one, what is a case study? Number two, what are some advantages or disadvantages in using a case study research design? And number three, what kinds of case studies are there? Before we look at a formal definition of what a case study is, let's analyse one that I personally completed using its title, which is A Case Study Exploring the Societal Gatekeeper Role of an Identified Ofsted Inspector Using a Systems Thinking Model of Creativity Within the Domain of the Vocational Business Studies Curriculum in Further Education Colleges in England from 2012 to 2015. A case study needs to have a subject that we're focusing on and also an analytical frame or a lens that we use to make interpretations. We need to know what kind of lens we're using to focus on our subject. In my case study, the subject I was focusing on is creativity and the analytical lens or conceptual framework is systems thinking. Another feature of a case study is that the context is very important. In an experimental research design, we tend to isolate the subject from its surroundings to try and control variables. On the other hand, in a case study, we leave the subject in its natural context and we try to look at the whole elephant instead of parts of it. However, looking at a very large elephant can be overwhelming and we, na we may not be able to pay sufficient attention to any detail to gain new insights or to generate new ideas about our subject. To look at the whole elephant, we may have to distance ourselves away from it and this large distance away from our subject may result in not having anything new or interesting to say about it. So even though we take the whole context into consideration, we need to create boundaries or parameters so we can get close enough to our subject and focus on a manageable size of the larger context. In my case study, I had at least seven clear parameters that created a boundary around my case, making it manageable and feasible. First of all, I've identified the inspector in the case study. This was myself. In identifying myself as the inspector, I acknowledged that the interpretations and conclusions I drew are subjective. Secondly, I made it clear that I'm researching the role of an Ofsted inspector and not or societal gatekeepers. Thirdly, I'm researching within the context of a vocational, not academic, business curriculum and not other subjects. Number four, I'm researching the role of Ofsted at further education colleges and not sixth forms or schools or universities. The case study is located in England and not within an international environment. The time period is limited from 2012 to 2015 when a particular common inspection framework was used and not the whole lifespan of Ofsted. Finally, the conceptual framework also creates a parameter. I'm making interpretations and drawing conclusions using a systems thinking model of creativity and not other approaches such as psychological, biological or psychometric. One of the advantages of a case study is that it creates a unique insight into a particular subject within a defined context. 
For example, my case is unique because I'm exploring my own role rather than someone else's role as an Ofsted inspector. I'm exploring the role of an Ofsted inspector instead of other types of societal gatekeeper roles. And I'm exploring creativity in the context of vocational business studies instead of subjects such as arts, media and science. And I'm looking at further education colleges rather than schools or universities. I'm focused in England rather than in any other country. And it's the three year period from 2012 to 2015 rather than any other period in Ofsted's history. And I'm exploring the role of an inspector using a systems thinking conceptual framework and not other approaches such as the psychometric, psychological or biological. So each of the parameters supports its uniqueness. Although a case study can provide us with a unique set of insights, the disadvantage is that we cannot generalise using this information. The fact that I'm using my own identity means that it may be limited by my own personal experience, values and biases. The fact that I'm using information from sources based in England means that the insights generated may not be relevant in other countries. The fact that I'm focusing on the business curriculum means that the conclusions I draw may be irrelevant in different subject areas. So the advantage of uniqueness is in contrast with the disadvantage that we cannot generalise using this unique information. Apart from the advantage of uniqueness and the disadvantage of not being able to generalise, there are several other advantages and disadvantages. The multi-dimensional perspectives that we can use in a case study, these can broaden and enrich our understanding. However, the small samples that are usually used in a case study may not be representative of the general population. We can generate insights and make connections using various types of thinking, for example, creative thinking, critical thinking, reflective and intuitive thinking, and these can be the main methodological tool. However, the subjectivity of the researcher may lead to distortion. There may be bias and we may overlook or ignore important findings because we don't have the awareness to be able to notice and to observe certain patterns and connections that are um, present in the case study. One of the advantages of using a case study design is that we can usually easily collect data from a wide range of sources, including primary and secondary data, from interviews, focus groups, observations and documents. However, all this anecdotal evidence that we collect may be seen to be unscientific, maybe not rigorous and robust enough. When researchers use case studies as a research design, they often look for patterns in relationships and processes that can be identified and interpreted. However, we can't look for causes and correlations between these patterns or these relationships and the processes. We can only establish the patterns, but not what's actually causing these patterns. When we use a case study design, we're not usually trying to prove anything. So the case study may take an unexpected or more rewarding direction due to emergence of information and knowledge, and this is valuable information. However, with very small sample sizes, these unexpected challenges may thwart the case study. For example, when there's a very small sample of participants, they may have a very high level of impact. For example, if they decide to withdraw their consent to participate, it may mean that the case study is no longer feasible because we don't have the participants that we were expecting. The type of case study you choose will depend on your purpose. Do you want to describe something or explore, explain? 
or evaluate something. I used an exploratory case study design because I wanted to broaden and deepen my own understanding of the role of an Ofsted inspector, my own role, by looking at this role from multiple perspectives. I interviewed business teachers, business students and business owners, and I also looked at Ofsted reports and Times Educational Supplement articles to see how a broad range of educators and the general public perceived the role of Ofsted and Ofsted inspectors. My purpose in this exploration was to generate new ideas and gain insights using multiple perspectives. I wanted to illustrate the role of an Ofsted inspector within a defined context with its parameters. I could have chosen other approaches such as describe the intrinsic nature of Ofsted as an inspection body, perhaps seen through a particular lens, for example Marxism. I could have explained how or why Ofsted was created as a state-funded organisation, or I could have evaluated the effectiveness of Ofsted, how effective is Ofsted in developing creativity skills, for example. Your context and the subject you're focusing on will help you decide the type of case study you choose. There may be some types that you can't select. For example, in my case, I wasn't able to do an evaluation of Ofsted because of the political implications and I didn't have the authority as an individual to gather data that would allow me to do an evaluation. It would require a great deal of funding and also the political authority to do an evaluation of Ofsted. So you have to ask yourself if you have the resources and the authority to do a particular type of case study. Another type of case study that I wasn't able to use was the interpretative. This is because I would need to rely on my insider knowledge from my previous experience as an Ofsted inspector. However, inspection information is confidential and private, so it would have been unethical for me to use this information for research purposes because I didn't gain the information for that purpose. So you also have to ask yourself if you can obtain the information you need ethically for a particular type of case study. For example, if your case study relies on sensitive information that may harm someone or an organisation, you have to be able to justify your use of this information. Can you prove that it's for the greater good? How do you feel about documentaries about criminals that disclose information about their families and friends who may not have been involved in the crime? We have to think about these things and the ethics involved, so we need to make sure that we're not harming anyone in collecting information. So in choosing the type of case study, you need to think about ethics, resources, and the type of authority required to gain participation. Do you have all of those things? Do you have the resources? Do you have the authority? Is it ethical? When you write up your case study report, you'll need to have a formal definition of what you mean by a case study. This is an example by Gary Thomas. He says, case studies are analysis of persons, events, decisions, periods, projects, policies, institutions or other systems which are studied holistically by one or more methods. The case that is the subject of the inquiry will be an instance of a class of phenomena that provides an analytical frame, an object within which the study is conducted and which the case illuminates and explicates. Before you start designing your own case study, it's useful to see some examples so that you can learn from their strengths and avoid some of their weaknesses. Activity 1 will guide you through an evaluation of a case study of your choice. So first of all, do some research to find a case study that interests you. Ask yourself, 
What's the purpose of this case study? Is it clear or is it ambiguous? What are the research questions? Are they implicit or explicit? What type of approach did the author take? What are the parameters of the case? What makes the case unique? What is the subject and what is the conceptual framework used to analyse the evidence gathered for the study? And finally, how well is the case developed? Activity 2 will help you put into practice some of the features of a case study that we've been discussing. For example, when you design a case study, you need to think about questions such as what's your subject and through which analytical frame will you focus on this subject? What's your purpose and what type of case study approach will you use? What are the parameters that bound your case and make it unique? I hope this video has helped you to make a start on your case study. Leave me a message in the box below this video or contact me at jesvia at universityforlife.com if you'd like me to review your case study design or answer any questions about case studies as a research method then please contact me.